1985's Breakfast Club. We're back at Shermer High School, the site of what had to have been some sort of childhood trauma suffered by the director, John Hughes. You wouldn't know anything about it, The story that defined a generation, which chronicles the events of five juvenile delinquents as they serve their disciplinary action as a result of their individual destructive behavior. What can I say? I'm thrilled where instead of using the time wisely and reflecting on what brought them there, they instead spend the next 8 hours and 54 minutes to mock and ridicule a well-intentioned civil servant. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. So stay tuned as we take a deep dive into Barry Manilow's closet and deconstruct this group of self-absorbed... I'm so passionate. Everybody loves me so much. <laughs> ...drug-addicted sadomasochists. on this edition of Cinema CPR. We are first introduced to our princess, Claire Standish, an individual whose privileged background and sense of entitlement leads her to reject her punishment for unauthorized commerce during her regularly scheduled educational timetable. I think it's been a mistake. I know it's detention, but um, I don't think I belong in here. Wow, that girl could put Instagram models to shame. Next, we meet the brains of the outfit, Brian Johnson. You are a parent's wet cream. A kid destined to spend his entire life trying to liberate himself from the friend zone. Excuse me for being a bird, I'm sorry. And if Brian is the brains, then Andrew Clark is the muscle. An individual who has everyone pulling for him. Coach thinks I'm a winner. So does my old man. And still manages to find something negative in it. And uses it as an excuse to torment his fellow classmates. Cut it out! I don't want to get into this with you, man. Then there's everyone's favorite kleptomaniac slash basket case, Allison Reynolds. Are you going to be like a shopping bag lady? A girl whose only true crime is hoardy. And a severe case of seborrheic dermatitis. Then there's our bad boy, John Bender. A 25-year-old high school student whose obsession with materialism... You got everything, and I got ...turns him into a menace to society with a flagrant disregard for the authority that somehow doesn't extend into punctuality. I want to congratulate you. Time. Then there's the hero of the story, Richard Vernon. Well, well, here we are. A man willing to subject himself to completely unwarranted attacks on his character, all to provide a stable and positive role model for troubled teens, as well as supplement his meager teacher's salary of 31000 a year. And I'm not about to throw it away on some punk like you. And instead of just wallowing away the day, Richard instead takes this opportunity and encourages them to further their literary skills by having them self-reflect on their own toxic behavior. All right, people, we're gonna try something a little different today. We are going to write an essay. Maybe you'll learn a little something about yourself. Which of course is immediately met with resentment. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? along with some oddly placed comments towards Vernon's love of baked goods. That man, it's a brownie island. Wanting to push the boundaries even further, Bender rigs the library door so Vernon can't spy on them. How come this doesn't open the other door? A back and forth contest then ensues, resulting in Bender forfeiting an additional eight Saturdays showing just how desperate he is for a strong parental influence in his life. You want to spend a little more time trying to do something with yourself and a little less time trying to impress people. You might be better off. Then, after a quick pit stop... What are we supposed to do if we have to take a... Their self-imposed walls show the first signs of cracking as common ground begins to emerge in the form of parental revulsion. You like your old man better than your mom? Both Which of course doesn't last very long. That is, until the next parental figure crosses their paths that they can mock and ridicule. Brian, how you doing? Your dad work here? 
However, this janitor is no stranger to trash talk. I look through your letters, look through your lockers. I listen to your conversation. You don't know that, but I do. I am the eyes and ears of this institution, my friends. Like, I'm going to take life advice from someone who went from man of the year to creepily spying on teenagers. It's now lunchtime, where they ignore the fact that their food has been sitting under their desk unrefrigerated for the last four and a half hours, and instead decide to concentrate on their lack of access to proper hydration, despite plenty of evidence to the contrary. Which culminates in Bender expressing his overwhelming disdain for meat-infused baked goods. Who puts me turkey pot pie? F you! And then with absolutely no effort, proceeds to convince the entire group to follow him to his locker to procure his stash of narcotics. That was marijuana. Do you approve of this? You know, if you're gonna keep drugs in your locker, may I suggest you draw a little less attention to it. And because no 80s movie would be complete without a montage sequence to help pad the runtime, they race back to the library, where the sounds of them running through the abandoned halls is somehow magically muted. And despite this, they still manage to trap themselves, resulting in Bender sacrifices himself so they won't all get caught. That's Wait a minute. Why did it take close to 20 minutes to run from his locker to the gym? In order to prevent Bender's disruptive behavior to further corrupt the other students, Vernon isolates him from the rest of the group, and then calls him on his bullshit tough guy attitude. That's what I thought. You're a gutless Where Bender proceeds to prove all of Vernon's predictions correct by sneaking back to the library to violate a minor. <laughs> It was an accident. You're an Am I the only one disturbed by the fact that when they were filming this, she was 16 and he was 25? Bender then pressures everyone into smoking cannabis, clearly laced with PCP, which sends Andrew into a drug-filled rage. How did Vernon not hear that? Meanwhile, Vernon and Carl have a heart-to-heart -heart about the future of Generation X. These kids get more and more arrogant. Oh, poor man. Come on, Vern. The kids haven't changed. You have. <sighs> okay, if this guy's so smart, then how did he manage to miss this mess? While back at the library for no apparent reason, Claire is berated by her peers over her sex life or lack thereof. Come on, answer the question! Come on, it's easy, it's only one question. No! I never did it! Which reveals nothing more than Allison's ability to manipulate people. I never did it either. I'm not a nymphomaniac. I'm a compulsive liar. You are such a b which then begins a very awkward segue into an even more disturbing monologue by Andrew, where he graphically describes how he assaulted another student, much to the delight of the other classmates. I, I jumped on top of him and, and started wailing on him. And my friends, they, they just laughed and cheered me on. Hold up. Are you telling me that he assaulted another student, humiliated him in front of his classmates, Untold amounts of psychological damage scarring him for life just so his dad would think he was cool and all he got was Saturday school? Yep. Man, I miss the 80s. Then instead of calling him out for the piece of shit he really is, they instead go back to hating on Claire for telling the truth about what will happen when they return to school on Monday. You want the truth? Yeah, I want the truth. I don't think so. You are a Why? Because I'm telling the truth. That makes me a And just when we start to gain a little respect for Claire for being the only honest one in the group, we are quickly brought down to earth by her all about me, me, me attitude. Your friends wouldn't mind because they look up to us. You're like full of yourself. Why are you like that? I'm not saying that to be conceited. 
fearing that Claire might steal the title as asshole of the year, Andrew quickly rebounds with his reaction to Brian's suicide attempt. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing says comedy quite like a desperate cry for help. And because we're still under the 90 minute mark, we have just enough time for a little dance montage, where Bender proceeds to simulate coitus with a sculpture by Henry Moore. Lucky for them, Vernon went mysteriously deaf halfway through the movie. And as Bender makes his way back to solitary confinement, Claire decides to redeem herself to all the members of the group by sucking up to Brian. You're the smartest, right? Well. <laughs> we trust you. Giving Allison a makeover as well as an instant erection for Andrew. And then tops it off by starting a relationship that will eventually turn abusive with Bender. And despite giving very specific instructions at the beginning of the film, we are going to write an essay. No less than a thousand words. They proceed to turn in a self congratulating manifesto that clocks in at only 97 words. And so there you have it, everybody The Breakfast Club. A step by step guide on how not to take any personal responsibility and simply blame everything on your parents. When you grow up, your heart dies. Who cares? I care. It's not your heart that dies, just your hopes and dreams. A movie that leaves us with just as many questions as it does answers. Like, why would a school let a teacher with emotional instability to be around kids? Oh, Mr. Tierney. A history of slight mental illness. <laughs> no wonder he's so f***ed up. How is Claire able to hold her lipstick despite her lack of cleavage? And last but not least... Young man, have you finished your paper? Write your answers in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, why not give us a like and hit that bell notification? Or else... The next time I have to come in here, I'm cracking skulls. For more videos like this one, check out the link to your right, visit our socials, and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see in future episodes, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below, where they will be given the attention they so rightfully deserve. <laughs>